Praise God. May God bless all of you. And when we say or we determine that God will bless you, it's because this is God's will for your life, for all of you. If you deserve, if you don't deserve, it doesn't matter. May God bless you all. We, the disciples, the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, were commanded to go into all the world to preach the gospel. Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then he said, heal the sick, heal the sick that you may find. This is interesting. How will we heal the sick if we are not doctors? But Jesus gave them his authority, his own authority. Jesus passed that on to his disciples. So, as one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have authority to heal you, even though I am not a doctor. It doesn't matter what the disease, the infirmity is, if it's a physical or emotional, spiritual disease. God gave us authority to heal the sick. I have authority to heal the sick. The authority of the name of the Lord Jesus, the authority of the word of the Lord Jesus, the authority of the spirit of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, right now, as you participate in this live transmission, be healed, be healed from your infirmity right now. Be free from this infirmity. Be free from this deceiving spirit, this lying spirit that has been using your mind, your heart to bring disgrace upon your life. Be free from witchcraft, black magic, voodoo. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, all evil that was done against you is undone right now. Witchcraft, black magic, voodoo, juju, whatever may have been done of evil against you, it's undone right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. What I mean is, in the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the authority of His Word, in the authority of His Spirit, be healed right now, be free right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Do you believe? Then you are free right now, in this moment. However, Jesus didn't just tell them to heal the sick and deliver the oppressed and give bread to the hungry. No. Above all, Jesus said, and say to them, so heal the sick there, and say to them, which is what I'm going to say to you now, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The kingdom of God has come near to you, dear friends. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God doesn't have a physical form, a visible form. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. It's the kingdom of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So, when a person receives the words of God, as we ministered here now, healing, when someone receives, when they believe, when they believe, when they hold on and, and they give in to that word, then what is written comes to pass in their life. So to those who are sick, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
you are already healed. To those who still find themselves paralyzed, afflicted, desperate, tired of suffering, someone said, Bishop, please teach me how I can rid myself from the problems I face in this world. And that's the point. People are only free from the problems that this world brings to us when they enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is the kingdom of God. But Bishop, wait a moment. Didn't Jesus say that we would have tribulations in the world and that we have to be of good cheer? Yes, he did say that, of course. We, you have to understand this, we who believe in the Lord Jesus left the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of this world, and we were inserted, we entered the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, the invisible kingdom, the kingdom of good, the kingdom of what is good, the kingdom of truth, of sincerity, the kingdom of honesty, the kingdom of the word of truth, and so on. I mean, the kingdom of decency and discipline and order. This is the kingdom of God here in this world. Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near you. In other words, the kingdom of God is available to you who are not yet in his kingdom. You are still part of this world, the kingdom of injustices and lies and deceit and lack of love, of corruption, the kingdom of deceit, the kingdom of disgrace, the kingdom of death, the kingdom of the devil. This world is the kingdom of the devil the kingdom of Satan, and that's why the world is such confusion, such mess. It's always been since the day Adam and Eve sinned. But Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God. And when a person hears his word, they hear this word, the kingdom of God has come near you, then the person has there, available to them, the option to leave the kingdom of darkness and enter the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of what is good. However, even though a person enters the kingdom of God, the kingdom of what is good, they continue to live. Their physical being is still here in this world. So they are still subject to the injustices. They are subject to hatred. They are subject to persecutions. They are subject to malice and fake news. I mean, they are subject to what the world offers. And the world only offers what is rotten. So to those who are in the kingdom of this world, what the world offers is easily accepted, received, and people live in the hell of this world. But those who accept the kingdom of God, which means those who opt, those who choose to live in the kingdom of God. Bishop, I choose to enter the kingdom of God. I accept to enter the kingdom of God. I want the kingdom that you are talking about. To accept the kingdom of God is when you, out of your own free will, say, my Lord, I stop being a servant of this world. I renounce being a servant of others. I stop being a servant of my heart, of my passions, of my desires, of my will. I stop being a servant of my will. I stop being a servant of my own self so I can submit to the will of God, to the kingdom of God to the rules of God's kingdom. So you now have this option. You have this option. 
Remember that Jesus said, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Jesus overcame the world, this filthy world, this world that belongs to hell. But why did he overcome? Because he had the Spirit of God guiding him, leading him, leading his life. And the Holy Spirit comes to direct, to lead, to conduct, like that pillar of fire that enters and burns our being on the inside. It burns with faith and trust and conviction and the assurance that God is with us. So when a person accepts the kingdom of God, they submit to the word of God's kingdom, which is the word of God, right? The rules of God's kingdom. For example, a person who lives in Brazil is submissive to the Brazilian laws. Someone who lives in the U.S. must submit to the laws of the U.S. So every citizen is submissive to the laws of the country they live in. So those who live in the kingdom of God submit to his rules, to his word. So if you want to resolve your problems, but don't you think ever in no time that as long as you are in this world, you will, oh, I'm going to enter the kingdom of heaven and I will follow the word of God and I will have no problems anymore. No, it's not what it is. Jesus said, we spoke about this yesterday, in the world, as long as you are in the world, you will have tribulation. I also had them, but I overcame the world. And the same spirit that gave me victory over the world is with you to guide you so that you may walk in truth. Those who walk in truth are not afraid. They are not afraid of lies. They are not afraid of being deceived. They are not afraid of this world because they know what the truth is. So the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light, of what is good. It's the kingdom of God. It, it is ruled by God's laws the Lord of God's kingdom, who guides his disciples, his citizens. So the struggles come, the problems. We have to deal with people who live in the kingdom of the devil, don't we? And how can you behave before people, before evil people, wicked people who live their life according to the kingdom of the devil. How will you deal with them? Will you fight them? No, you won't. But you will have a behavior, a posture that is blameless. You are going to have a true behavior. You are going to be sincere, honest, a person of integrity. Your word will be worth more than signing a document. So when you live in the kingdom of God, God is sanctified. God's name is sanctified in your life. He's glorified through your life. And it's not just, oh, hallelujah, praise God, I worship you. No, you honor him with your Christian character, which God himself gave to you. This is it. The Holy Spirit gives us the character of God, the spiritual growth that comes from God. It's divine. This is the kingdom of God. And this happens with those who are in the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near you. You now have knowledge of what God's kingdom is. You have knowledge of what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is decency, it's discipline, honor, truth, character. The kingdom of God is order, discipline. Wow, Bishop, how am I going to live in this world under this order and discipline? Because down here it's total disorder. Well, I already said spiritually speaking, 
you submit to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. You obey his rules. You follow, you obey, you mold your behavior at home, at work, at school. You mold your behavior according to the word of God, according to the rules of God's kingdom. And when you make the effort to do that, then you can be certain that the Holy Spirit will give you conditions to embrace, to receive the citizenship from God's kingdom, which is the kingdom of what is good. And those who live in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of what is good, obviously, they overcome. They always overcome. That's why Jesus was never lamenting, complaining, weeping. Never. Because he was in the kingdom of God. He, he's the king of God's kingdom. But he was submissive to the Holy Spirit. So he followed the laws. Even taxes he paid. Jesus paid taxes here. And he taught the disciples, look, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, which means you have to pay taxes. It's, it's their right. Do it. If they will steal from you, it's their problem. But you are going to do your part. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And give to God what is God's. This is the kingdom of God. Jesus did that. Excuse me. Therefore, dear friends, when a person lives in submission to the kingdom of God, they have peace within them because they are in Jesus. They are submissive to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are submissive to the kingdom of peace, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit. So the peace they have is within them. Tribulations they will face. Afflictions, for sure, will face. However, this externally, because within them, the kingdom of God is within them. Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near you because the kingdom of God is inside of you. In another passage, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is inside of you. Did you understand, dear friends? When the kingdom of God, I mean, when in here, inside of us, we have a pure conscience, clean, honest, you have peace with God and with yourself. You have peace with yourself and with God. So, you will face tribulations and struggles, but you can be certain. You have this assurance because the Holy Spirit gives this assurance that everything will pass, everything will pass away, everything will end, everything will go away, everything will end in this world. The kingdom of this world ends and it's about to be destroyed very soon. Very well. Now, you understand what the kingdom of God is, which is available to you. But Bishop, I'm Catholic, I'm a spiritist, I'm this. The kingdom of God has nothing to do with religion. Religion is something from hell. It's something from hell. What Jesus brought was the kingdom of God. He brought his word, his doctrine, his teachings, his discipline, his order. And whoever submits to this word lives in the kingdom of God. And they live at peace with themselves and with God. Because God himself confirms 
His words within us. However, those who just embrace a religion, religion A, B, or C, will continue to live in the kingdom of this world because religion brings no peace, does it? You have a religion, you follow a religion, whatever it is, will you have peace? No, you have no peace. The greatest adversaries of the Lord Jesus were exactly the most religious people, the Jews, who knew the word of God, they knew the Torah, but they did not obey. They obeyed what was easy, what was simple, but the sincerity, the purity. That's why Jesus said, you see it, these people honor me with their lips. He was talking to the Jews. These people honor me with their lips because they are religious. They think that by worshiping me and bringing offerings that this is enough, that this is what I want. No, I want a identity, I want character, I want a rational worship that is intelligent, I want sincerity. What is the point of you placing on the table, on the altar, in the offering bag, all the money you have, but within your heart, you still live in sin, still making the same mistakes, no character with lies, deceit, falsehood, hypocrisy. It's pointless. It's pointless. What's the point of placing loads of money on the altar and not forgive your brother or your sister or someone who has hurt you? What's the point? I want you to forgive as I forgave. You have to act as I do, Jesus was saying in different words, right? This is to live in the kingdom of God. So you want to resolve your problems? Enter the kingdom of God. Live according to His laws. Take the Bible, the Word of God, and start to mold your character, your thoughts, your heart, everything according to what is written. And you will break through. Ah, you certainly will. You certainly break through. Because God is great, dear friends. God is great. And His Word does not return to him void. Everything he said, everything he says comes to pass because his word is authority over the kingdom of hell and the kingdom of lies. That's why he even said to his disciples, but whatever city you enter, heal the sick, set the captive free, etc., and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Whoever accepts the kingdom of God, meaning the word, the doctrine, the teachings, the laws, the commandments, the discipline, the order of my word, this one will receive the kingdom of God in them and they will be saved. But those who don't accept, then you know what's going to happen. Dear friends, we are going to end it here because if I don't stop, I will go on and on, you know. But I could be here talking and talking and talking the whole day, day and night, without ceasing, because it's what God has given me, and that's what I've been bringing to you. May God, through the Holy Spirit, confirm these words in your life, because these are not my words, neither my thoughts, but these are words from God. The kingdom of God has come near to you, dear friends. Accept it. Take the Bible, start to follow 
the rules, the doctrines that is written there, the words, the teachings, the discipline, the order of the word of God. And you will break through. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Praise God.